What's really interesting is there's actually three kinds of hunger. Oftentimes people think there's one. <laughs> when people say I'm hungry. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Our first question as uh, dietitians in our practice is, well, what kind of hunger are we talking about? Because different types of hunger have different types of needs. And so um, this work actually comes from a colleague, uh, two colleagues of mine, um, Dr. Colleen Cannon and uh, dietitian Wendy Shaw from Craving Change. And uh, we teach their cognitive behavioral approach to eating in our practice because it's very practical. Um, people get it. And uh, this, you know, aspect of the three types of hunger comes from, um, from that program. So uh, number one, first type of hunger is what we call um, stomach hunger. And stomach hunger is kind of predictably, you know, true physical biologic necessity to eat. So this is like the stomach rumbles. This is like, it's been hours since I've eaten. Um, this is like anything is appealing right now, you know, including, you know, carrot sticks. I'll eat anything because I'm starving. I need food. Perfect for the time to grocery of- shop. <laughs> time to grocery <laughs> shop. Well, you might get some good stuff, but extra things come into the car too. Um, anyway, so physical stomach hunger, of course, the way we meet that kind of hunger is, of course, eating really healthful food. This is the best time to think about planning our three components of the balanced meal. Um, It's like, yeah, you could eat junk foods and sweets and treats here, of course, but um, healthy foods will taste really delicious here. And this is where we want to start because that's the best way to address stomach hunger. Now, the second type of hunger um, is what we call mouth hunger. And mouth hunger is actually more related to sensory properties of food or more related to cravings for foods. So this is, for example, for me loving chocolate. This is like I love like the whole mouth feel of the creaminess of chocolate. Or if you're an ice cream lover, it's like you like the cool like creaminess. If you're a potato chip lover, this is like the crunch and the saltiness that you're after. Or let's say, you know, you just ate a meal and you weren't even hungry at all from a stomach hunger perspective, but someone in your house decides to make popcorn an hour later. Um, Now you smell it. So we've got a sensory trigger for aroma going on now in the house. And you're like, ooh, I need to eat some of that popcorn. (laughs) So (laughs) mouth hunger, um, again, the way we navigate mouth hunger is actually different than stomach hunger here because you don't need like a, you know, necessarily a healthy balanced meal here. In fact, it's probably not going to suffice. If you were craving something um, savory like potato chips, all the amount of uh, eating yogurt and blueberries in the world will never actually address that type of hunger. You could just keep eating it, but you'll still be craving potato chips. (laughs) So, So the best way to manage mouth hunger is really looking at really getting, first of all, very clear about what specifically that I'm craving. Because you know that it's like, well, I just ate. I'm not really stomach hungry, so it must be something else. So if you spend a little bit of time in sort of a mindful eating exercise of really thinking about, is it sweet or is it savory? Is it, and if it's sweet, are we talking like, is it like chocolatey? And if it's chocolatey, are we talking like real chocolate or could like hot chocolate do the job? Or are we talking about chocolate ice cream or chocolate chip cookies? All of those are very different cravings. Um, Same thing, you know, once we get into the savory department. So the more you can really distill down what specifically you're craving, um, the less likely you'll be to what I call chewing around the craving. People will sort of go through their pantry and start sampling a bunch of foods and they're like, no, that didn't do it. Had an apple, that didn't do it. All right, maybe it was crackers. No, that didn't do it. But if (laughs) you just stopped and taken a few minutes to really drill down what type of mouth hunger they were experiencing, they could have just had a small amount of that food and moved on. So rather than eating the, you know, 500 calories worth of all the different things in your cupboard, you might as well have just had a couple hundred calories of ice cream, called it a day (laughs) and really been satisfied. So that's how we address mouth hunger most effectively is getting really clear on what it is and then allowing yourself permission to enjoy that food soulfully, joyfully, um, blissfully, (laughs) mindfully, all of the words. Um, This is not like, you know, jamming it in as fast as you possibly can in front of a screen. Um, Those will never be satisfying when we're doing, you know, multitasking while eating. So when we are eating our most favorite delicious foods, It's like, I want you to like close your eyes and be one with the food. You should be like loving this, like nobody's business. Because when you do that, your brain calms down. You've been satisfied. um, And less of that food is going to feel like more. (laughs) I think we've all had that exact experience, that image of going through the pantry. (laughs) 
What can like, I what eat instead? Like? Yeah. <laughs> so if you're kind of going through the pantry, chances are it's not stomach hunger because you probably like, mm-hmm. you, if, if, if it was, you, you're plated a meal, you've eaten it, you're good to go. Um, just spending a little bit more time like flushing that through. And then, of course, the third type of hunger is heart hunger. And heart hunger is predictably more of that emotional hunger. So um, sometimes we associate heart hunger with being all the negative emotions. It can actually also be positive emotions, too. Some people are total social eaters, um, celebratory eaters more than they are, let's say, negative stress or sadness or being angry, um, boredom types of eaters. So um, all of those emotions can trigger a response to want to eat. And, um, you know, sometimes it's just because we just... We know we're feeling down. We know we're feeling anxious and stressed uh, and more so now than ever before. And it's easy to want to stuff down that uncomfortable emotion with food. And of course, sometimes it helps a little. But if we're really honest with ourselves, um, we just we can never, you know, manage those emotions effectively with food. That's where we need to start thinking about, okay, how can I comfort myself without food in a different way that might be more effective? Because food will help me for the next 20 seconds while I'm eating it. And then it's going to be left with feelings of like, you know, well, that didn't really help in this same anxious, depressed feeling is still with me. And now I feel even worse because I was eating too much. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. So spending a little bit of time, um, not in like your worst state of mind, I usually encourage people to do a little bit more reflection early in the day when they're a little bit more positive, maybe feeling a little less burned out and beaten down by the day. Um, but really reflecting on like, how can I comfort myself without food? And thinking about, you know, the the easiest and the, uh, I would say, affordable ways that you could do that. 